What's going on everybody? Thanks for tuning back in. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at how to take a RESTful API that uses Node.js, Express, and TypeScript, and connect that to a MySQL database. I'm going to be creating the MySQL commands manually. I'm not going to be using a wrapper like SQLize. These are going to be my own promise functions. Let's not waste any time and get right into it. The first thing we need to do is download the MySQL JS component. So how we're gonna do that is with an npm install MySQL. And then once that's done, we also have to install the type definitions. You can do that with an npm install at types MySQL like here. And once that's done, we're going to rename our sample roots. And just like the Mongo example, I'm going to just use the example of books for our database entry. So what we're going to do first is we're going to take our roots sample TS file, rename that to book. Secondly, we're going to take our controller file, rename that to book as well. Then we can go over to the server file and rename our sample roots to our book roots. We can change our sample roots down here to just forward slash books. Once that's done, we need to add some configuration. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create some config like you see here for the server host name and port, but for MySQL. And we're gonna need four variables. We're gonna need a MySQL host, a MySQL database, a MySQL user, and a MySQL password. The host is going to be the IP or address of your MySQL server. The database is going to be the database you're going to be using. And the user and password are going to be a user you have on your MySQL database. Now it should be noted that I'm using MySQL 5.7. There are connectivity issues if you're using MySQL 8, and I'll leave a link for some error triaging for that below. So I'm gonna go ahead and just fill out all my functions with my uh, local DB that I'm using uh, with my appropriate values. Once I'm done that, I'm gonna create a constant MySQL object and just pass in my host, my database, my user, and my password, like I do for my server object below. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to import that in the config in the bottom, as you'll see here in just a second. It should be noted that again, this project that I'm using for this sample is a RESTful API that I had built previously, which is also available down below if you need a starting point. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new config file called mysql.ts. This file is going to host our query and our connect function basically everything we need to do to connect to the database and send and receive data. Now, I'm going to make a couple of functions in here and they're going to be promise functions. That way, when you're calling them from your API routes, you can call them with a then catch block as you would from something like Mongo or SQLize. So let's start off by importing MySQL from MySQL. Then we will go ahead and import the config from our dot forward slash config, which sits in the same folder. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a parameters object that we're gonna pass in to everything that we uh, do with MySQL, so any command or call that we make. So inside of it, it's gonna be those same four things. It's gonna be a user, host name, password, and database. So create that object as follows by calling the config.mysql and then the appropriate variable. Once we're finished this, we can go ahead and create our first promise function. So what we're going to do is we're going to declare a const connect. We're going to make that async and we're going to make this function return a new promise. And the type we're going to pass into the chevrons is going to be a mysql.connection so that when you are using this with a then catch, the variable that's returned in the then block is the connection variable itself. You're going to pass in a callback function with resolve and reject and you're gonna fill it out as follows. First, you're gonna create a constant connection and you're gonna make that equal to mysql.createConnection and pass in your parameters. Then you're gonna take that connection and call its connect function and return a callback function that passes in an error. You're gonna to check to see if there is an error and if so, you're gonna pass reject and return the function. But if there isn't an error, you're gonna resolve the connection. The second function that we're gonna create is gonna be called our query function. 
it's going to be created in a similar fashion. We're going to make this one an async function as well. And this one's also going to return a promise. We're not going to pass in a type to the promise chevrons. And that's because we don't actually know which results we're coming up with yet. Uh, this function is also going to take two parameters, one called connection, which is a mysql.connection, and one a query of type string, which will be our SQL statement. Pass in a resolve and reject callback to the promise and do the following. We're going to run a connection.query, pass in our query and our connection, and then have a callback with an error and result variable. Like we did above, check to see if there's an error. If so, reject the error and return. But if there isn't an error, what we're going to do is we're going to resolve the results. Say that five times fast. Once we're finished with the function at the bottom, we can export and we can export our two functions, connect and query. Now that we have our MySQL functions ready to go, we can go ahead and get rid of the original function here that's in our sample controller. And we can call this get all books because as we mentioned before, books is what we're going to be using. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a logging.info. And first we're going to create actually a namespace variable. We're just going to call this books. And then we're going to pass in our namespace. Uh, again, this is a custom, custom logging function that I created for this API. So if you're not using mine as a base, you would probably just use a console log or whatever logging library you're using here. You wouldn't need that namespace. Then we're going to create a query and it's simply going to say select star from books, which should return all the books in the database. We're going to call our connect function from our config MySQL. Mine is automatically called when I type it in with Visual Studio Code. Inside of the then and catch blocks, we're going to create our connection and error props uh, passing into functions. First, let's create the error function by logging our error and then return a result.status of 500. We're going to pass in some JSON. We're going to pass in a message, uh, which is our error.message, and then we'll pass in our error object. Once we do this, uh, I'm actually going to copy that for later. Inside our then block, we're going to now call our query function. And we're going to pass in our connection that we just resolved and our query. A then block, which is going to have a function with our results prop. And then we're going to have a catch block like we do below to catch any problems with the query. Uh, we're going to have pass in this as an error prop to a function and just paste in our error message from below. Now there's one more bit of housekeeping we have to do with our MySQL and that's close the connection. So after the catch block, we're going to add a finally block. And inside that finally block, you're going to call connection.end. Now inside the results, we can simply just return a response that passes these results to the user with a status of 200. And we can pass the JSON just passing in the results key and save our file. Now everything in here is looking pretty good. So we're going to go back to our book route. We're going to put something in here like get books, change the controller to link to our books function, and then get ready to test this in Postmon or your web browser. So I'm going to be testing this inside of Postmon. And I'm going to call this request that I already have in here from previous testing, uh, which is going to be our local host. You're passing your port. The route should be books forward slash get forward slash books. And you can see when I send this query, it returns uh, an empty result. And that's because we don't actually have any books inside of our database yet. But you can see that the MySQL call is working. We are not, we're not getting any database errors and everything seems to be going pretty smoothly. So the last thing we have to do is actually create a function or an API route that will allow us to create a book and put it inside of our database. Again, I'm using MySQL 5.7. So if you're getting an error that I mentioned down below, just please take a look at the triaging. So the next thing we're going to do is make a create book route. So we're going to create this route and we're going to start off by logging our route and just by saying creating book. Then I'm going to let a blank, uh, I'm going to let some empty brackets here equal my request.body. And inside of it, I'm going to pass in 
my author and my title, which is going to be the two variables I pass in to create my book. I'm going to create the MySQL query, which in this case is going to be uh, insert into and then books. Uh, I'm going to use my author and my title columns and then the values. And then inside some double quotes, I'm going to pass in the actual variables. Now, I should tell you here that if you're going to be making a database like this, you should have some sort of uh, configuration or some sort of middleware that confirms what you're passing in so nobody can run a SQL injection attack on you. But this is just a very, very basic example of how to actually insert something into a database. So once we do this, we can actually just copy and paste our function from below. Uh, because we're going to be using the query in basically the exact same way. Uh, the query is actually where we're inserting the information into, so nothing's changing. And then I'm just going to change results to result, uh, and then save this. And then we're going to bring up our Postmon. And actually, I need to add this to our routes. So we're going to do a router.post. Uh, we're going to and actually, I forgot to export it as well. So let's go back to our controller. Let's uh, copy this and throw it in our export default down here. Then go back to our routes, call this, and just call it create book. And then once we do that, save everything, go back to Postmon, and now we're going to enter our new query. So we're going to do a post, and it's going to be to wherever your API is being hosted. Mine is here. And I'm going to create a body, raw JSON. And inside of it, I'm going to pass in two keys, author and title. And I'm just going to put in some uh, fake information. I'm just going to put Bob and uh, we just put Bob's book as we always do or something like that. And then uh, I'm going to go ahead and send that. And again, you can see that it's not found. So what happened is I actually, uh, when I sent this, I actually forgot to make this a post. I still did a router.get, so be careful with that. So let's change that to router.post, send one more time. And then you can see uh, MySQL will return this uh, little bit of information for you. And you can see one of the values here is insert ID. Um, it actually tells you the ID of the thing that you inserted, whatever your primary key was. I just have an auto incrementing integer for this. Uh, so I'm assuming that you have some previous MySQL uh, experience when you're doing this, but it does tell you a little bit about what it does, and I find this little bit of information useful. If you did want to return the actual uh, thing that you just inserted, then you would just chain a third callback. So you would put in a query and put it inside of the query function that you already have, and then get the book that way by using the ID. And then if I call the get all books route, you'll see that the books you inserted just popped up. So that's pretty much it. That is how you create your own promise functions to use MySQL in order to use it with TypeScript inside of a Node.js Express RESTful API. Uh, again, this isn't using a fancy wrapper like SQLize, which if you didn't want to do this yourself, I would highly recommend using or look into Mongoose if you're using MongoDB. But if you just wanted to connect to MySQL the simple way, this is how you do it. Okay, guys, thanks so much for tuning back in and we'll see you in the next one. <laughs>